right now, I'm gonna show you how to nature journal for yourself because sometimes we get lost thinking about what other people want to see, how we can make nature journaling posts for our social media, and we forget that the reason why we started this practice was to do it for ourselves. So today, I'm out here in this magical location, and I'm gonna show you how to nature journal for yourself. So one of the first things to ask yourself is what turned you on to nature journaling in the first place? What was the feeling about it that inspired you? What were some of the activities that you did that got you really interested in nature journaling in the first place? Was it the likes that you got when you posted nature journal pages on Facebook? Was it the compliments you got from your friends and family? Probably not. So let's do a journaling prompt real quick answering that question, describing what got us turned on about nature journaling in the first place. So ironically, while I was writing down what turned me on about nature journaling in the first place, I'm just getting swarmed by mosquitoes, which brings back fond memories of nature journaling in the tropics. So starting with a little bit of a prompt and just asking yourself and using a nature journal as a journaling tool too, like a diary, we can find out what our intentions are and what were the things that got us started with nature journaling in the first place. Coming back to this prompt every once in a while is gonna help you stay focused and not lose your original intention. Sometimes with social media, with monetizing the things we love, with turning nature journaling into a job or teaching nature journaling to kids or sharing nature journaling with other people or comparing ourselves and consuming nature journaling content online. With all of those things, we can lose track of what turned us on about nature journaling in the first place. So now that we did that prompt and thought about our intentions and how we got started in this practice in the first place, we're ready to go on to the next step. One really important thing for me when I'm nature journaling for myself is to find a place that I really can connect to, especially if there's lots of rocks, rattlesnakes, and poison oak, and beautiful views. I am grateful that I currently have the access and physical mobility to nature journal and climb around in places like this, but I'm also aware that not everybody does. This also might not be everybody's cup of tea, so figuring out what is the important location, what is the magic spot for you is a very personal affair. Not everybody wants to find flowers growing on a cliff and nature journal those. Next step, when it comes to nature journaling for yourself, it's really helpful to know what your juice is. Your juice is the type of nature journaling subject, art supplies, or nature journaling approach or technique that gives you energy. It produces energy and makes you motivated and energized to do more. I distinguish between juice bread and butter, and growth edge. Bread and butter is your sort of staple nature journaling. Growth edge is the things you do less and have to work harder to do and requires energy. But juice is the type of nature journaling or nature journaling subjects that are so exciting to you that they motivate you and energize you to do more. For me, it often has to do with nature journaling in challenging locations. But I also love drawing plants, I love drawing birds, and I love drawing landscapes. Those three are all juice for me. Reptiles would also be a great one. So what is your juice? What is the type of nature journaling that turns you on most? Knowing what your juice is, knowing what your bread and butter is, and knowing what your growth edge is, is going to make it so much easier easier for you to nature journal for yourself.
Have you ever heard of gratitude journaling? It is a great practice to improve your mental health through journaling. Usually it's done in the diary type of journaling, not so much in nature journaling, but it's a great thing to add for nature journaling for yourself. It has been proven multiple times to have beneficial effects on mental health, with depression, with anxiety, all kinds of things like that. All you have to do is write down a few things that you're grateful for. Remember the basic ones. And finally, get out of your head. What would you have done as a kid? How can you engage your other senses? Touch the water, feel the moss, catch the bug, smell the flowers. Little kid Marley also probably would try to catch that lizard right there, even though it was inside of this poison oak. So here's the problem. I love nature journaling so much that I've made it into my job, into my career. That almost by definition makes it impossible just to nature journal for myself. This is something I've been struggling with recently as I work my butt off trying to make a nature journaling business that's actually successful. Do you have anything that's like that in your life where you've made it so serious that you forget to have fun? And once you forget to have fun, like when you were a kid, it's harder to keep learning and keep getting better at that practice. Let me know in the comments below if that's something that you can relate to. And thanks to all my Patreon members for making this show possible. Learn more about how to become a member of the Nature Journal show right up here. And if you can't wait all the way until next week for the next episode of the show, check out this playlist here. Bye.